welcome to ME1 TV. My name's Steve Latton with the one and the very only Cleo Rockus. Oh, and now there's a throbbing into, in, introduction, isn't it? Thank you so much. I do the best throbbing ones there are. So now, <laughs> we go back a while. Let's, uh, let's talk about, uh, well, the, the 80s. The 80s were an amazing time. Yeah, they were. They were f it was full of colour and, and unpredictability and, and great happy people, lots of happy people. Everything was geared around being happy and creative, really. Was it really as good as I remember it? Or was it just a veil of, uh, of, of drink and parties? No, I think that it was as good as you remember it. Uh, there was a lot of drink and parties. And I go out uh, a, lot, a lot now, and of course there's still a lot of people having a good time, but I don't know if the drugs are different or what, but people don't seem to be having as good a time as they were in the 80s. <laughs> Yeah, it's all a bit of a blur, really, and uh, of course we knew each other back then, uh, and of course you were known very well on the TV uh, via Mr Kenny Everett. That's right, yes, I started working with Kenny in my last year of school, and uh, it, really I can't say anything other than they were my most favourite years of my life. It was like being in a giant cartoon, and and... We just went out to have fun. He was mischievous. He wasn't uh, aggressive and he wasn't mean. His comedy was not mean. It wasn't at the, uh, the detriment to anyone else. It was all cartoonula and happy. And it was like living on the edge of one giant inflection. <laughs> now Upward there, inflection. I, I, I was going to say, not a, da not a downward one. But of course, <laughs> behind every, behind every uh, clown, there's a sad side. But Kenny was uh, a thinker and a, and a deep thinker too. Yes, he was. But um, I, never, I never experienced a down. People d do say, oh, well, you know, he got depressed and things. It never depressed when we were together. We would go out and shriek from edge to edge. Uh, we would get very nearly arrested on um, several occasions just by having, you know, being slightly over-refreshed <laughs> and, and having a really good time. So he sort of stretched the elasticity a little bit. But there was one time we had been at a big charity function with um, Princess Diana and I was wearing a giant pink ball gown with a tiara just for little campness, as everyone else was. And um, on the way home, because Kenny was a really great drunk driver, and I know that's probably not a gr really PC thing to say, but he was, and, um, and very calm. And um, so on the way home, we would, he was driving round and round uh, Trafalgar Square, and I was on top of the car pretending to be a siren, because he said, Clee, you look like a siren in that uh, tiara. So I got up on the top of the car and went, dee, 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 going round and round Trafalgar Square. And the police stopped us and stopped the car and opened the door and looked at Kenny and said, Oi, you, out the car now. What do you think this is all about? And Kenny got out of the car and he said, Oh, there you are, Clee. I've been driving round and round looking for you everywhere. <laughs> and <laughs> as soon as the police saw it was him, you know, they, they didn't arrest us. Uh, or him. Or, so we, we got away with a lot of bongly glee, but nothing malicious, just, you know, happy, chortly nonsense. And of course there was life after Kenny, who sadly left us now, and for you, uh, things didn't stop there. No, in fact, um, I'm president of the Tequila Society, I'm a real tequila potholer, and I, in 2011, I spent 10 months creating my own brand of tequila with a Mexican uh, master blender in, in Guadalajara. So I have my own tequila brand, Aquariva, and it's been awarded best of the best in the world's biggest tequila competition in America. Gosh, how do you get through a tequila competition without falling over? Well, if it's really good tequila, you just, like mine, uh, you will just become the favorite version of yourself and that's where you'll stay. So what's it about tequila? Is it magical? I mean, it's said to be above the whiskies, the gins, the vodkas and stuff. Is there something really magical about it? On a really more, more serious note, the tequila that most people have had, including myself, uh, it were the first tequilas were sort of things that you thought, in a bobsleigh to hell, I was never, ever going to go near a tequila again. And that's what's known in the industry and now to most consumers as a mixed tequila a great tequila has to be 100% agave. That's the plant from which it's made. And of course, like anything, there are different levels of 100% agave tequilas. I, I make mine um, with the highest quality agaves. I, I reduce the methanol so that people will not be reeling all over the place. And um, there's no sugar in it. There's nothing in my tequila but the plant and volcanic spring water. So a lot of the drinks 
uh, that people consume uh, are loaded with, with chemicals and sugars and all sorts of junk that send people reeling and they're often the sort of slightly out of control um, girls in short skirts, you know, in, in gussetless outfits rolling around with their honeymoon pout on display after a few sweet cocktails and their boyfriends are full of sugary cocktails too so they get aggressive and the sugar is a real, real demon in, in everything. So I make all my cocktails with organic agave syrup. And again, that's it's my syrup. And again, I, I want people to have a good time. My whole thing is I like, get no bigger kick than seeing people drinking my um, products and having a good time. And again, like the tequila, there's agave syrup and there's agave syrup. A lot of the agave syrup out there is mixed with corn syrup, so it's got sugar and junk in it, and it's pointless. Um, and I spent two years sourcing my... Um, agave syrup to make sure I could bring the best because I like to party and get away with it. Do you involve a worm anywhere? No, and my advice is never drink anything with a dead animal in it. Uh, really, never drink anything with a dead animal in it. Never drink with dreary people and always wear a full complement of underwear. <laughs> because you never know. <laughs> um, no, uh, this thing with dead animals, it's all, it's all gimmick and all, uh, you know, really, really for shoddy... Um, shoddy liquids. Um, I wrote a book entitled The Power of Positive Drinking, which is all about, I'm a spirits judge, and you get to learn what's in various spirits and wines and things, and, and they're loaded with, with impurities. Wine can have up to 200 additives legally, but who, who wants to consume stuff we don't know about? So it's um, really important to me to have the highest quality, and and I, people email me the whole time saying, uh, you know, they've had the best evening of their life on it. We've got Holly Willoughby and Philip Schofield, uh, Darren Brown, Lee Francis, Tracy I mean, even Joan Collins loves my tequila. So we have a whole wide range of people who, who know how to glee and feel great the next day. There's an image, Phil Schofield with a slammer in his hand. But talking of slammers, do you, uh, do you actually slam a quality product like this? No, the only reason you would contemplate or people are encouraged to slam anything is because it's inferior um, or to be served ice cold. So there's no, there's no reason to slam tequila unless you are in a position where you are going to have to have something amputated without an anaesthetic. That, <laughs> there is really no reason. It's, and it's, all the, it's, it's a gimmick created by uh, certain brands to really shift a lot of their um, um, lesser quality stock for being the politest I can be. But no, a great tequila should be sipped. And you should feel wonderful on it. You should not feel uh, anything other than the favourite version of yourself. And if the whole room's drinking it, then everyone becomes fabulous and then suddenly <laughs> it cartwheels of glee. <laughs> If the room's going round, it probably helps too. So does it stop here, Cleo Rockers? Um, does it stop at tequila or is the world your oyster? Well, my, my tequila here is um, selling really well on online in particular, which is the way everything's going in the States. So I'm really pioneering on, online. We're online waitrose, uh, drink shop, whiskey exchange, and then in the States, drink up New York, or we're in, in the States in... Um, uh, Rosa Mexicana, we're in Palada, so it started to roll out in 15 key states, which is really exciting, and um, send shipment to India, and um, my organic agave syrup, this one here, is in Waitrose, in the mixer department, it's really important that to go to the mixer department, because that's the best, and, um, and I say it's the best, because it is, obviously I would if it's my own brand, but it's actually... It, it actually is uh, scientifically, if you break it down, it is the best. Now, tequila does rock, and of course it's literally rocking at the moment. It is. I'm so proud I can hardly move, um, because Aquariva tequila is the official tequila of Team Rock, which is a classic rock magazine, Prague, uh, all of them, and here's my ad. Look at this. This is so fat with rock tails. And of course, Team Rock, they're the top in, in, in the rock industry. There's no, nothing higher and no more expertise than you find in Team Rock. And they're fabulous bands. We've got everyone. They've got everyone in Team Rock, all the big guys. So, so I'm really, really honoured. And they're all drinking my tequila. How good is that? Tequila rocks on the rocks. Exactly. Doesn't get better than that. Just tell me how to pour 
the perfect tequila? Well, you get a lovely... Um, I, I like it in a shot glass. You can get a sort of champagne flute. And you just pour it in there and sip it out. It's very simple. And I think you and I ought to make a dent in these bottles, don't you? Cut. Going back uh, to the 80s then, let's talk about uh, working with Nigel Planer and, um, and Rick Mayle. Yes, I first met them in the 80s and then um, about, I suppose about 10 years ago, I, I um, produced um, a comic strip film called um, uh, Sex Actually. It was all about uh, rather, um, I don't know how to put it, um, maybe not the, the well, strange suburban swinging that went on with, with, with sort of fleshy people in the suburbs. Sounds very Rick, very <laughs> Nigel. <laughs> yeah, it was very funny. It was very funny. It was, it was a, you know, it was a, 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 and Sheridan Smith was in it. There's a great cast and they were superb. So it was a lot of fun. I've always been a fan of the comic strip. And tell me about Baby Juice Express. Well, Baby Juice Express uh, is a film by Nick Moran and uh, it was a sort of a gangstery. Uh, film, so it had real gangsters in it too, which was really quite exciting um, because that made for quite um, odd late night filming. You know, when you were night shot, night night shoots, uh, there'd be strange characters that would show up, and there'd be strange people guarding the set, and you know, you'd hear sort of squeals in the background of people who were being turned away. So there were real gangsters coming after the real gangsters in the film. So it was really quite exciting and, and very nice. And I have to tell you, all the gangsters I met were absolutely lovely. One last question, though: Do you miss telly? Do you miss all that stuff? I liked the television when I was working with Kenny. Television was fun and it was really full of great characters and, and it was like being in a giant club. Uh, now a lot of the entertainment uh, relies on people selling stories about each other and being sleazy about each other and having plastic chesticles and particles and all sorts of things, you know, really freak TV. Um, but I am working with Lee Francis, Keith Lemon. Oh, and I'm working on his, we'll be working with him on his new series. Uh, and if it's something I want to do, uh, I will do it. And that's why I'm sitting here with you, because I've been uh, throbbingly half in love with you since the 80s, and you know that. Cleo, I don't blame you. This is Cleo Rockus <laughs> on ME1 TV.